Google is the largest search engine in the world. It's the place to have your firm's website indexed. It's where all that work that you put into to SEO, to optimizing your search results, whether someone's looking for your services locally or trying to find you for larger national, international scale work, you, you're gonna be found on Google. And as it turns out, Google, the largest search engine, happens to own the second largest search engine. That is YouTube. That is video. And it's the future of where your firm should be headed, in my opinion. And if you're considering starting a YouTube firm for your channel today, we've got five tips to get you started. Stay tuned. Giving architects and landscape architects the tools and strategies to be seen, heard, and valued in the marketplace, and telling the stories of leaders building thriving design firms and attracting their ideal clients, this is From Architecture to Profitecture. I'm your host, Jay Krakowski. Let's get started. Future and fellow Profitex, hello, how are you? Welcome to the show. Today we are talking about YouTube specifically about getting your firm, your brand, maybe your personal brand started on YouTube. And what are the five main points that, that you should be considering to, to get things rolling? We're gonna dive right into it. Number one would be intent. Why are you even starting a YouTube channel? I mentioned a few at, at the start uh, of, the, of the broadcast here. It's, it's the second largest search engine, which happens to be owned by the first. And as I've said uh, many times on, on previous shows, more and more you're seeing video results come up in, in the ranking, sometimes above the, the, the top ranking as people are searching. And this isn't just for uh, finding a local service provider, a local design professional. This is also just typing in questions about design about how to work with an architect and a contractor simultaneously. What is design build? Uh, any number of questions that you can think of that, that your clients have asked you in the past, they are Googling them. They are searching Google for them. And video is being pushed more and more to the top of those search results. In looking at the intent for starting a channel, is it to build your, your local brand? Is it to, to get clients in the door, whether that's residential or, or commercial, what have you? And video, being able to look, look you in the eye, to, to look your potential clients in the eye only helps to build that know, like, and trust factor. And, and having this eye contact, be it virtual, is it's the strongest way to do it. Or is it to build a, a personal brand? You know, I, I almost see it as the, the avenue to build the next layer next the next level of starkitects and yes i hate that word too but you think about how they how previous quote unquote starkitects have built their their fame their their notoriety it's it's through publications it's through consistently putting out great work well if you are able to demonstrate your your expertise your knowledge your love of your particular design profession and do it in such a more personal way as, as in creating YouTube videos, they can go a long way to building, to building up your personal brand. And then, as I just mentioned, maybe you just want to share knowledge that you have in the profession. Maybe, maybe you're a teacher at heart and, and yes, you're a design professional by day to pay the bills, but, but not necessarily wanting to go into the academic realm, but you still want to be able to teach. You want to be able to share what, what you've built up over, over years of, of experience and, and how you fostered uh, the love for the particular profession or the particular types of projects that you're working on. So identify your intent for starting the channel before anything. And then second, you want to think about your audience. Who are you trying to attract? Who is Who are you trying to create these videos for? Who is searching for the expertise that you have or searching for um, ideas on the, on the types of projects that you like to work on, who is searching for you locally to hire you, identify your audience, and then you want to be speaking to just one of them. 
just just come up. You you could even give them a name and 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 a family setup and gender and and level of education. You you can create this avatar, and with every video, I'm going to be speaking to you. When I record these videos for you, when I record these podcasts for you, I'm talking to you. Whether you're a fellow prophet or a future or a future one, but I'm speaking to you. And when I create videos for my JWK Design channel, I am speaking to homeowners. Uh, particularly homeowners with with young or growing families, because that's who I love to to design homes for. So in every instance, every part of the script that I write out, every image or graphic that goes in the video, it's tailored to just one person. You really want to get in the mindset of you're having a conversation, just like we are right now, just like you would a potential client or or an existing client or or a or a colleague. And, and approach everything about the channel that way. Um, and everything that, that, you, that you create in, in the videos that way. So you wanna be thinking about them first, the user experience, the, the end user, what, whatever you wanna call it. Have your audience in mind first in everything that you do in the videos. And that leads into number three, which is of course graphics. The videos are nothing if you don't have good thumbnails, if you don't have the banner across the top when someone clicks on your page, if you don't have all those set up properly, then you're going to have a much tougher time getting traction, building building your brand online and in online video. So what's in a YouTube banner? Well, there are specific sizes outlined by, by the platform. Right off the bat, the graphics need to be, you need to be clear, you need to be clearer than, than, I, than the words I just stumbled over. You need to clearly state who the channel is for and what they will learn, what they will understand, what they will experience in spending any time on your channel at all. Be very clear, state it in, in very plain English or whatever language you happen to be, be, be creating in. But one, one thing to think about is using fourth grade language, fifth grade language. Very, very simple. Someone who has never heard of an architect, if you if you need to explain what you do and then beyond that, what this channel will, will help them to do or help them to understand, be very simple in your language. You, you don't, the, the banner is not a place to, to write a paragraph. It's not your new about me page or about us page or about your firm page. Um, but you want to be very clear. You want to have graphics that align with with, uh, with the branding of your firm, with, with all that marketing and graphic design work that you've done to set up your firm and set up your drawing templates and your contracts and your business cards and, and all that good stuff. It needs to, to align across the, the YouTube graphics setup as well. And then you get to the meat of everything. Number four, of course, is content. Have a plan for your content. While you can go out and just try to vlog your, your site visits every now and then, they're not going to be as successful as opposed to coming in with a set plan of content that you want to deliver to your potential audience. Not just your potential clients, but your potential audience. Keep in mind, the whole planet has access to this, the second largest search engine in the world. So things like what are frequently asked questions that, that come from your potential or, or existing clients even. Those might be two totally separate categories that you wanna address. So answering FAQs is, is a, an easy place to, to generate content. And you wanna also keep in mind that you can just answer one question in a video and it can be a two minute video, that's okay. When someone's searching on Google or someone's searching on YouTube, they are trying to answer a very specific question. They're find, trying to find usually a very specific piece of content. And maybe that's just to entertain themselves. Maybe they, someone just likes watching videos on, on architecture or structural engineering or landscape design or what have you. Um, but you don't need to cram five, 10, 15 FAQs into a video. It's just too much. It's not a Facebook live and it's not the FAQ page on your website. When someone's searching in YouTube or again on Google, they're looking for a specific answer to a specific question and keep the focus of that video narrowed to answering that question or presenting that topic that, that you've chosen. The next set of, of content could be events that you're going to. 
could be industry events. No, you may need to get permission to film there, but film your experience going to going to the, the national conferences or um, take the time to, to document your uh, the, the events of, of your local chapter or events from from new um, new organizations that you that you're attending. Maybe that's USGBC. Maybe you're crossing over to ASID. Maybe you're going to a network or video marketing conference and you want to bring that expertise not only back to to your staff and, and your firm, but maybe you want to share it with with colleagues, um, be they from university or just past uh, past jobs or or in your local area. So filming events that can be a great source of content. Um, documenting a project start to finish, I think is a real exciting um, opportunity. And yes, while we can go live on Instagram or go live on Facebook when you're standing out there, the way that that social media is set up is that you know people are moving through, um, they're moving past your content at warp speed. It's so fast that um, they won't remember what you posted the day, the day prior. So, well, yes, Facebook, Instagram, um, that's a great place to, to document site visits and, and understand what you're seeing. Taking the next step, going to the next level and creating video content to be on YouTube in the search engine algorithm is it, it's such a, it's a missed opportunity, I think, by a lot of designers. And it's not just to show the framing and show the plumbing and, and relate it back to the original renderings, but it's, it's to help potential clients get inside your mind to help them see what you see in going through a, a framing review or in laying out uh, outlets or AV, have them understand how you work, help them to understand how you work. And um, the video, it's, it's just such a, it's such a powerful medium one and two, because it's archived and it's searchable, your brand, can it can have that reinforcement again? No like and trust. That's what you want to be building. That's that's the huge selling point, quote unquote, of of getting on YouTube again, even though it's free. <laughs> so you want to think about the content. Number five, and what is perhaps the hardest? What was hardest for me? I'm I'm recording this on the first camera that I bought for YouTube, and it, oh, another one. It sat in that closet for four months after I bought it because I was terrified I didn't have the graphics set the right way, that I didn't have all my scripts written out. I'm not going, uh, there's no script, there's no teleprompter here, and I, I don't actually script my videos anymore. I, I outline them. Um, but those first few video videos, and you can tell because I look like a deer in headlights, <laughs> go back and watch. It's, it's tough to, to just get started, but start now. Just start. Your first few videos, they're going to be terrible. If you go to anyone that, that you follow on, on YouTube to you subscribe to, in some cases, it's it's laughable. The, 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 both the quality and the comfort on camera or, yes, the tech, although I'm going to get into that in just a second here because I, I don't think you should be worried about the tech. Um, but it's it, it's almost laughable. And a lot of it has to do with, with the initial discomfort of staring at a lens and trying to imagine that you are staring at a person, that I'm talking to you. That's become easier for me over the years. Um, but just just getting started, just building that, yes, that confidence, but that the repetition almost of sitting in front of a camera in, in a quiet room by yourself and essentially talking to yourself, but you're really talking to, to someone that's looking for you, that's looking for your expertise. So just get started. And, and I mentioned tech briefly. Um, you can start with, with just a webcam. You can start with just a $60 webcam. You don't need a DSLR. You can do everything on your phone. You can even do the, the graphics and the thumbnails and the editing, certainly the recording. You can do it all. You can do it all on, on uh, an iPhone or an Android or whatever you're using. The, the tech is there. It doesn't need to be in 4K. It really doesn't. Uh, considering most people are watching on mobile devices in the first place, once you once the screen gets down to that size, even the size of an iPad, the difference between 1080 and 4K, it's just it's not noticeable enough to where you need to to stress over that. Um, 
I'm talking to you through a, I think a $40 microphone. You don't need to have thousands of dollars invested in tech to get started. So I would implore you not, not to let that, not to let that, that hold you back, but rather building this comfort and then building the backlog of material so that when someone finds you say three years from now, and you've got 40 videos on the site, they see that you're committed to, to showing up. Um, so you'll, you, you will be committed to showing up for them in a way it might, it's subliminal. It's, it, you know, it's not necessarily a, a one for one thing, but the fact that you're showing up on camera, that you are sharing your expertise and your love of your particular design profession goes a long way. I'll say it again, building that no like, and trust factor, which is so key in getting potential clients to sign on the dotted line. So I hope those, those five tips were helpful for you. Identify your intent, know your audience, create great graphics to match those two, come up with a content plan and just get started. Any questions on YouTube or anything video related, I'm happy to answer. Shoot me a direct message on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram, or comment on one of my YouTube videos perhaps. And until next time, make it a great week because our success is inevitable. Take care. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you stay up to date with future episodes. Connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn at Jake Krakowski. And for show notes and much more, visit profitexturebydesign.com slash podcast.